welcome to June 2017 webinar. We're going to dis discuss must have Excel adding. So as someone use Excel fully day in day, 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 in, day out, uh, professionally, this is the only thing I do. So I have um, isolated out addings that I find extremely useful and do I call them must have addings, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you should you will probably use all of them but you must be aware of what they do because it will be very tra it it will be a tragedy to do need them and not know they exist because they make life really really easy and uh, if you notice that I, the last one it's almost like a promo of my own app uh, i use it it's a must have must have had in for me but it might not be for you so let's start from in the order of um, importance i have arranged them so i'm going to start with them um, fuzzy fuzzy lookup padding. So I'm going to take us to the Excel sample files. If you have any question and uh, you don't need to, there is no special question time, just uh, type them in and I'm monitoring the chat box. So any question you raise, I'm going to immediately address. So here's the fuzzy lookup practice file. blow at your hand. Let me see if I can show you how to do that. Um, I'm showing you that. To do that, all you need to do is click on this set and set it to, you know, a high quality. All right, so that's how you you could set. I'm not going to do that because this is the very same. I don't want the quality to be affected. But for you, so continuing, what is fuzzy lookup, right? And what does it Have you ever had a situation where you had, you know, lists in this and so you try to use VLOOKUP. Uh, let me show you. So you try to use VLOOKUP most of the time. We that's what we do. We come in somewhere, and so I'm going to do the check, and then I do a VLOOKUP formula here. Me, I just want it. Um, email ID oh, just my
and I'll also check Uh, here it's working fine. Oh, am I missing something? Okay, so screen is black again. I'm going to check. <coughs> check out why. So it's telling me the stream is bad. I'm going to try to So I'm trying to check. Any luck, any improvement? So, how about now? Screen is okay, so screen is back. All right. Uh, how about audio? Is the audio back? some reason uh, okay so I should continue now right maybe I'll just uh, retake the the I'll retake the fuzzy lookup and then okay sorry for that that's technology for for us. You know, it's not always predictable. Okay, so I'm going to close up 
and um, undo some of the steps. Okay. So I'm going to close the file and Okay, uh, I hope you got the introduction right. So all I need to do first of all, so I'm going to convert them into a table. And then um, I will And then okay. I pick the two fields I want Power pivot. For power pivot, you want to do you want to analyze raw data that are more than one million rows. So I'm going to give us an example. I have the I have some practice files I can take from. Okay, so I have a I have a file that has about two million rows of data. I'm going to try to open it in Excel. Okay, and we'll see what will happen. So it's trying to open it. So it's still opening. It's a large file, so it takes some time. Uh, it's taking a while. It's um, like fifteen percent done. I hope you can still hear me. Please uh, do indicate if you are hearing me clear clearly. Okay, so it's it's still opening. Uh, yeah, I think it's almost halfway done. So it's a really, really large file. Not the type Excel is used to handling. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Okay, great. Now I have I'm getting this, uh, like an error message, right? So file not loaded completely and let's dig in you see the file contains more than 1,048,576 rows you know which is correct and uh, so let's see what happens when i click on okay actually but after the last cell possible in excel you know it chops off the remainder of my data now if you are to analyze this you have a big problem if you can't bring in your data into Excel, then there is no analysis you will do on this that will be accurate because this is bringing just a portion of the data, right? So how do you handle this kind of situation? That's what pivot, power pivot, you know, can easily handle for you. 
So this is one situation that if you encounter, then you need to start uh, getting really friendly with power pivot. The other one is if you make very, uh, if you try to make very very detailed dashboards, you know, ones that can do you know, really complex things. When I say complex things, like make some filter work and not work. Uh, when you really wanting to become a, a, a dashboard pro, you should get comfy with Power Pivot. You know, if you are trying to use Excel anyway, if you are trying to use some other tools, maybe Power BI, Tableau, then no problem. But if you're using Excel and all this while you've not been trying your hands on Power Pivot, you've been leaving a lot of value on the table. And maybe you have not even been, I'm suspecting you've not been doing really, really, um, you know, you've not been maxing out the value you could put in your dashboards. So how do we use the how do we use power pivot i'm going to i'm going to close that particular file and um, i'm going to open a new sh a new file and then i go to power pivot uh, for me i have it enabled so what if you don't have have it enabled right so here's how you check two things number one are you using Excel 2013 or 2016? So if you're using 2013 or 2016, then you can straight away go to File, go to Options, go to Hardings, then here select Com Hardings, click on Go, and um, look for Power Pivots. You just will not have this many options like mine has uh, I use too many things so I have a lot of options here okay so make sure you enable power pivot if yours is showing power pivot for Excel 2013 it's the same thing so just look for Microsoft power pivot enable it you know enable means tick it and click on OK and you should see it here but if you use Excel 2010 <sighs> then you have to be using the highest version of Excel 2010 and then you go online and download so you go online you download power pivots for excel 2010 so you go on google and search for that and then you will see this and uh, from there you download download and install okay so that's for that so once you have it enabled huh click on the power pivot tab click on manage uh, when you're doing it this for the first time it takes a while it could take like 20 30 seconds Any questions so far? Okay. And um, once this come up, right? I'm going to maximize this. So this is the uh, Power Pivot tab, right? It comes out as a separate window. So once that comes up, I'm going to maximize it, and all I need to do is provide the connection, uh, bringing the data I want to work with. So you can connect to direct directly to a server you know data services and what I need is under from other sources so this lists out pretty much all the sources you can connect to and uh, what I'm looking for is a text file source so I'm going to keep scrolling down and uh, what I need okay so this is what I need text file I click on next and then I go to file path browse I look for the very file I want to bring in which is big data okay I'm going to tell you to use first row as column headers great and the uh, finish and it starts loading in the data 
you'll see the progress reports in here and you'll see it's loaded more than 1 million it's gone it's going to about 1.3 million now this is more than excel can um, handle so you're seeing one of the obvious benefit of power pivots and it's almost done you can see it's gone way past 2 million now and done so close to 2.1 million rows and uh, I click on close okay and here is the data I've brought in right see up to the last record and here from here you can now begin the usually when you have a large rec uh, record of data you'll be using pivot table so that's why you have this you know hooked up to pivot table so once I've brought in the data you can do some other things. I can create. Uh, I can bring you some other data and create relationship between the tables. All right. So this is the. These are the other advantages you get with it. And if I had another table, I can create. Uh, if I brought in another data, I can create relationship between them. And right. and so in this case, I don't. I don't. I don't think I have that kind of a procedure. I don't have any data I can bring in. But if I have another data. Maybe like uh, target data. If I can bring that table in and say this is there's a relationship between the PISA here in the sales record and the PISA in the target data. So yeah, then I'm able to do a report that shows you know how performance is with target. Okay, and you can create hierarchy if you right click. You can create hierarchies. So these are things you can do with normal Excel. You can model the data, do some other things, and it doesn't end there, right? So even when you bring this in into, so let's go back into my data view, right? And then I take this into pivot table. I'm going to put it in this existing sheet. Okay. And then I can start working on it. I can start doing my regular pivot table reports. right and uh, even the other things you do with a regular pivot table you know, like I double click here I change this to maybe I want to show as percentage of grand total and then maybe I want to sort this to show largest to smallest I can do all of that and more so here is where the more are. I can I can create new measures so this uses a new kind of formula. You know, we call it DAX, Data Analysis Expressions. With these, you open a whole new world, you know, beyond what you can do in Excel. So if you find yourself working with large amount of data that are more than um, 1 million rows, then start checking out Power Pivot. And if you want to be able to do a lot more complex analysis on your data, you know, dashboards essentially, then check out, make sure you start using Power Pivot. Okay, so we are done with power pivot. Let's move on to the next on the on the slide. Name manager. Okay, so what's name manager? Name manager is an adding that okay, it's an adding by an Excel veteran and I found it really useful. So if you install it, it comes, it shows under the formula tab and uh, it has its own, it has its own uh, menu, its own dialog box and with which you can manage named range. So I'm going to show us an example. So let's say I'm in here and then I'm going to make these names, so define name. So I'm going to just uh, use a, sh a shorter way of changing all of these 
into names create name from selection create names from values in left column Let me just do this. Okay. All right. So I've created some names, right? Uh, name ranges. This you know, when you give a range of cell some names, I could name all of these. You know, percentage, quantity, and I do enter, or you could use the name manager. So right now I've created some names. Okay. With name manager, I can do a lot more with managing the names. So if I click on name manager, right, it shows all the names I can so let's start with I can add names. I can delete names. So these are no big deal. This is where the magic begins. I can tell it to create for me an a, a list, you know. A new sheet with a list of all the names so that's what I'm going to do I'll say filter the names to list no no just go ahead and create for me a sheet with all of the names so I'm going to close this and you see see so it listed out how in created a new sheet and then listed out all the name ranges I have there and where they refer to and some other properties of of those named range so let me switch off the filter so local name error so some other things you can like are they used or not used so uh, none of them is used in any formula so this you can find this really useful if i'm working on a project unfortunately i can't show you the details this has been a lifesaver for me so this way I'm able to quickly know because I'm actually coding the these names into the VBA. So it makes a lot of sense to have somewhere handy a list of all the named ranges and where the, what they refer to and makes life really really easy for me. So what a, which other benefits do you get from them uh, from that name manager? I'm going to go back in here. We stopped here, right? Okay. Then there is this. You can convert names from global to local. So what is global? What is local? Uh, let me do an example here. This is this is. Uh, I'm thinking this should be global, right? Let's check. Yeah. So it, all these names are global, meaning the you it refers first to the sheet name before the named range itself. So that making it easy for you to call them up anywhere, right? Let me explain. If I'm creating a name, so let me try creating one from here. New. See, you get scope. Do you want it workbook scope or worksheet scope? So this worksheet scope is local. Why workbook scope is global? What sh worksheet scope uh, means you can only use that name within this worksheet. You know, once you get to another worksheet, you can't use that name anymore, right? Why workbook scope? You know, I can use the name across the whole workbook. Assuming I've created like all these names I've created by default, they will create as a workbook scope. Uh, so which is kind of global? I can. I can change them all to local. So let's do that. So I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to change to local. Okay, delete after that. And uh, instantly it has done that. How will I know it has done that? So let's come in here and check and check. See scope. The scope are now sheet level scope before they were workbook level scope All right so let's do one more i'm going to call this new name if i check it out in name manager new name workbook level scope now if i go to name manager 
that same new name right I can transform it into let's see same new name it's now sheet level scope so but the magic is I can do this across multiple names at once so I can do a lot more right uh, if you I will recommend you download this install and um, and then use it so where do you download this uh, it's an add-in by by Jan Karen P I have problem called pronouncing his name uh, JKP that's what we often call him so if you go to this web link let me try copy paste it on the chat box okay so that's where you get out the name manager one and okay so I'm going back to the webinar so that's for name manager the next on the agenda is solver I might need to increase my pace so what do we use solver for so far I have a um, already in the practice file for it so we use solver for mm, something is gone how are we in here let me close some things So linear programming most often, but say you this example anyway. I got its cut C. The link. All right. So here is the Now, uh, how can you optimize your supply distribution network? You know, the way you do the distribution so that you see the least amount, you know, of freight. So, you secure the least shipping cost, you know. Okay. So, let's say these customers. You need to supply customer one thirty-five thousand you know, quantities of your product. You know, twenty-two thousand to customer two, eighteen thousand to customer three, thirty thousand to customer four. How do you decide how many to supply from warehouse one, from warehouse two? Factoring in the cost of shipping from warehouse one to customer one, warehouse one to customer two, warehouse one to customer three. So this is the cost of shipping for each of the diff from each of the different warehouse. To again each of the different major customers now you can try doing this manually you know try and error or you let Excel do this for you using an optimization algorithm so to do that we will need to enable solver if you want to use Excel to uh, solve this optimally so to enable solver solver is on that data menu once you've enabled it but by default is not enabled so you go to file you go to options and then headings and uh, I think just normal Excel heading click on go then you should see solver heading so enable it solver heading I have mine enabled so once you do that you will see solver here and then what do I do I click on solver 
and then I set the objective I want to I want to determine my total shipping cost the minimum value of total shipping cost by what by changing the by changing the different you know by changing this amount of quantity I I ship from the different warehouses to the different customers and then what are the constraints so again I have what we call constraints so okay I'm gonna have to solve it uh, let me cancel and go back Okay. So I set in the constraint. So constraint number one is that the total orders, so these total orders must be exactly equal to these ones. Maybe I'll delete the constraint. So I delete this. And the second one is that let me delete the constraints so we can work on them from scratch. So this total order in here must be equal to the total order here so I had that and then the next one is the total shipped so the different warehouse have uh, currently available this stock you cannot ship more than what's available right so we have to say you, know, you can't ship more than what's available and those are the two different constraints we call them constraints once you've done that, right, you then choose what kind you want. Here we're using simplex linear program. You can use these other ones if this does not get you an answer, meaning if your problem is not a linear programming one. So in order of priority, it's best you try and make your programs. There's what we call linearizing your program, but it's, a, it's way ahead of what we're doing. So if you have a situation where your pro problems are not linear, meaning simplex couldn't solve it then just go with any of these two but always use simplex first all right so i'm going to click on solve and then instantly it's going to work out the solution now tell you to keep the solution okay then and see so it says i should ship out everything for from warehouse one you know to customer one to customer two and then serve customer three and four move majorly from cost uh, from warehouse two and then um, that will get me the lowest total shipping cost so that's what it does and if you go through that link I've, I've i've shared then you'll be able to see a detailed explanation that's why i i show that link they've been very nice and kind to give a very detailed explanation of how to use solver Okay, so I also use it once in a while. It's not all the time I get issues that are like this. It's like um, goal seek, but with a lot more constraints. And and in case if you have multiple answers, right, you can say you want the minimum value, you want the maximum value, or you want exactly something. Exactly something will be goal seek anyway. So I move on to the next one, which is. Um, data analysis tool pack so data analysis tool pack is just like solver you will find it in file options adding excel addings click on go and enable analysis tool pack once you do that you will see this data analysis uh, tool in under your data menu so I click on data analysis It's opening. Just uh, give it some seconds. All right. So here I have a whole new suite of things I can use. Right. From though again, depending on your field, you might not find yourself using everything or a significant chunk of it. So you have a lot of data analysis tools. You know, correlation, covariance, descriptive statistics. Uh, histogram exponential smoothing Fourier analysis for me I use majorly uh, regression 
and regression is the main one I use because uh, most of my complex data analysis I do them in R or Python and like the exponential smoothing if you use 2016 Excel 2016 you have forecast sheet which is a, a more accurate more reliable one than the simple exponential smoothing one here okay so that's data analysis and then next on the agenda is power query so power come headings click on go and then you but but the same functionality right you have the same set of functional the same set of tools too and you know a really, really large So from files, even from directly, you can connect uh, databases without having to do too many. SAP, Sybase, Postgre, you know, if you use Azure, you can connect also to Azure Data Lake and a whole new kind of data sources. You can even connect to Facebook. See, Facebook, Dynamics. So these are the, some of the extra advantages you get with it. But the real power lies in the fact that you can do a lot more with your data matching. You can merge connections, you know, if I launch the query editor, it brings up a whole new a whole new uh, tool which you can use to mash up your data do a lot more than you can do in the regular Excel so if you do a lot of data cleaning this can save you a lot of time okay so uh, let me close that one Okay, so this is this is the Power Query, uh, its own editor, just like Power Pivot. You know, it has its own editor, and you see it has a whole, you know, some whole new set of tools that you don't have in the regular Excel, and they do a, they do things that you can't do with regular Excel too. Okay, so that's Power Query, and then the last one, the last one, uh, which not not coincidentally is my own heading so Nigerian market data let me create a new file okay to to you install the heading all you need go go to is insert and then you go to store and then you search for Nigerian market data. Just, uh, my internet is is not uh, extremely good today. Okay, so not to bore, so you go to the store, search for Nigerian market data, and you will see the heading. Okay, so once you install the heading, let me close this. Once you install the add-in, you'll, you'll have this in your home menu. And all you need to do is simply click on it. And from here, you can do a lot of things. You can do, you can get stock prices, you know, stock analysis. You can uh, pull exchange rates. You can pull stock indices, crude oil price, uh, Nigerian monthly oil production. GDP, Nigerian GDP growth rates, inflation rate, CBN interest rate, uh, Stambic IBTC, purchasers, manufacturer in, man, purchasers, managers index, uh, population, Nigerian population, 
unemployment rates, states and capital, local governments in Nigeria. You can even pull random Nigerian names and the uh, inspiring quotes. So to round up this webinar, I'm going to tell you to pull up 10 different Nigerian, Nigerian names for me. Okay. And uh, see. And that is it. So you can use this if you need to just uh, do some demo and you need some random Nigerian names. So thank you for joining me for, uh, for this webinar. And uh, the video recording will be there. So I only try to clip off the the beginning where I had issues, you know, where people had them um, blank screens. And then in the middle too, when you also lost me. So I'll try and cut off those areas. And uh, so thank you. Thank you all for joining. And they have a nice week ahead. Just one more thing. The recording will be on YouTube. Uh, okay, before I sign off, any question? So any question? So these are the way we are, these are the hard things I talked about in case you want to copy them out. Okay, so in, since there's no question since there is no question uh we sign off here. Have a great day.